And this is it, a 3D printed Raspberry Pi Pico based HBOT plotter programmed in Python that can not only draw on paper but as you can see also burn wood. In this video I will show you how I made it. Yeah, that was a really challenging project and it took me a lot of time. Of course I wasn't working only on this project for the last 3 months because there are other projects that I'm working on. And of course there is university which took the majority of my time, there was a lot of reports to write, sometimes even new things to learn and yeah that was challenging but finally I'm back with I think a pretty cool project. If any one of you would like to build such a project you can find all the files and links down in the description. I was considering publishing that only on my Patreon for your Patreons but actually I feel like it's better to just publish it for everyone. I really like sharing my ideas and projects and designs so you can find everything for free and if you feel like it, you can support my projects on Patreon. I started this design with the idea of creating a spring-loaded mechanism with 3D printed wheels and that would go smoothly on the aluminum profiles. At least that was the idea. The first prototype was working actually pretty good but the problem was that with the HBOT construction there is actually a lot of force because of this long belt that goes all around the plotter so you actually need to have a really really stiff construction so yeah unfortunately this idea of spring loaded mechanism wasn't really the best but for some light stuff it could really work great. So the first design was actually really really weak if not even terrible so well definitely I had to redesign pretty much everything in this plotter and think about different ways to actually construct it to get it working. So I'm already a few days in, maybe even a few weeks into working on this project, but I don't really have a lot of time because of my university, so you know I'm working on this like part-time, but it is working really well after third redesign, finally it's close to working fine. An obvious choice to make this machine stiffer is to use linear rails. I used linear rails on Indymule and it works great, so I thought I will buy just a shorter version, 500 mm long linear rails, three of them actually, and this should improve the stiffness of this plotter, and it actually did. After first test I could see that the results are kind of promising and you know we are going somewhere with the project, so I kept working on 3D printed parts, redesigning the wool design, and at the same time I started working on the PCB. Maybe I will even make my own PCB on a milling machine, on a CNC machine, on the Dremel CNC, and uh, because why not? And well, right now I need to work a little bit on the code. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes, that's great. I'm going to mill some stuff on the Dremel CNC and uh, this stuff is going to be a PCB. So there on YouTube there was a live stream of how I'm making the PCB. Unfortunately it wasn't really that great and successful but after the live stream I tried again with a bit different settings and it was actually successful and the PCB is here. I used the Flatcam and BCNC in order to machine it on Dremel CNC and a pyramid milling bit. I changed the pin numbers in the code so now it should work as it worked before but with the PCB. And the PCB turned out actually quite decently I would say. 
It wasn't really that easy to solder because there is no solder mask, so usually this kind of PCBs made at home are not great for soldering, but you can really quickly get a prototype of your PCB, which is great. But there is still a problem, not sure if you can see that from this angle. Actually, firstly, instead of the pulleys and bearings, I used just a 3D printed part that was attached to a screw and that was a terrible idea, it wasn't working, there was a lot of friction on actually this part and everything was bending. I printed a pen adapter so that I can mount the pen right here and this is actually the first test with a pen so I'm really hopeful that it will actually work as it should. I should be able to send the G-code and start drawing. Shit, no, 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 no. It should work right now. It's definitely a lot more promising. I think those ugly lines are caused by the fact that this pen is, well, not really mounted in there properly. Let me try to fix it. All right, so now we have the pen attached, hopefully in a bit better way. So let's try right now. The pen wasn't really touching the paper properly, but I can already see that this circle is a bit better. Considering that the pen was mounted with the bubble wrap, I would say that's a pretty decent result. At least the circle is finally a circle and straight lines are straight. Also, when it comes to the code, there's a lot of small little bugs. Uh, the circles weren't really perfect once I tried to draw them on the paper and sometimes the machine was doing some weird stuff and that was all basically connected to bugs in the code and to some small mistakes that I did here. Because I decided to actually figure out on my own how the Bresenham's algorithm work and how to implement it instead of finding a solution online, there was a lot of problems with that and that thing, the Bresenham's algorithm is essential for any kind of CNC machine because whenever you want to draw a line, you basically need that algorithm. And because whenever you are drawing a circle, you are actually drawing just a lot of lines, it is essential for any operation. But after fixing all of those small mistakes, everything started to work really perfectly. And actually, I would say the coding part was not only really, really interesting, but actually really enjoyable to write. So after adding a lot, a lot of upgrades, uh, figuring out all the bugs in the code and 3D printing a lot, a lot of parts, I started to see the progress. And I actually started to believe that this project may be finally at some point in the future successful, which was great. After some more testing and tensioning the belt, I noticed that my motor plates are actually bending quite a lot because those were 3D printed 
and of course I could design them differently to get it working with the 3D printed part but I also have a CNC machine and I can machine something like this out of aluminum that is already mounted here and I prepared the G-Code Infusion 360 so why not to machine it on the Indie Mule also that's a good moment to mention about the sponsor of this video and that is industry.cc which means that basically this video is sponsored by me so if you are new here, you are probably wondering what industry.cc even is. Well, it's a website, company, project, CNC machine that I built. It's called Indymil and you can find more info about it on industry.cc. There's also my store where you can buy parts for, well, this project, this CNC machine. You can buy uh, parts like those steel plates that you can see, for example, here tapped and painted this beautiful blue color. You can also buy a set of unpainted and untapped plates. You can buy Indie Shield, which is the controller board for this CNC machine and another actually. You can buy the instruction or the set of screws and bearings. In the future, I will hopefully add more new cool products uh, to my shop. So definitely check it out. And this is a great way to support my projects, my work and everything that I'm doing here on my channel. So don't forget to check out industry.cc, there is link in the description. After adding all of those upgrades, it really started to work and look promising, but just to be sure, I decided to add another linear block to the linear rails on the left and right side, and that actually improved the wool machine quite a lot. So as you can see, I tried to draw some more stuff and the drawings still weren't that great. So I decided to once again redesign some parts, especially this one. And right now I have two linear blocks right there, mounted with screws to the 3D printed part that is mounted to the profile also. Right there on the bottom the mounting to the profile is a bit different. And now that thing is really stiff. There is actually quite a huge difference and here you can see the globe before replacing those parts and the globe after replacing those parts. So yeah, I think the difference in some places is quite obvious. And also the, the circle itself, or the ellipse in this case, is actually way smoother, so that's great. So once I was quite happy with the mechanics and the program, I added the pen lifting mechanism and I redesigned the pen holder like three times to actually make it perfect and I started drawing stuff on paper. And that was really cool. I started this project as a simple drawing plotter. That was the idea. I just, I wanted to attach the pen and draw some stuff on the paper. But later I thought, what if I will attach this gas soldering iron mini blow torch thing to it and try to burn something 
on plywood. That's what I thought and that's what I did. So I moved everything to the workshop because I feel like the workshop is a lot better place for any kind of testing that involves fire and this is generally not something that we want to do at home. The test yesterday is actually really good, kind of promising, but at the same time I expected actually a different result. Well, it is not really that well focused, you can't really produce a very detailed image like you can with pen and I also tried to do that with the soldering tip for the Versa tip but the problem is that there is friction introduced to the wall system and this z-axis carriage is not really designed to accept any load from here here or here and because of that the tip started to smash into the material burn some holes and it is not working that smooth and you can see that the lines are uh, kind of shifted sometimes There is unfortunately one big problem, whenever I'm trying to hold it perpendicularly to the ground, after a few seconds, there is no flame. So I have some bigger pieces of plywood, I prepared some drawings that I want to burn, or at least try to burn. I also designed those kind of legs for the floater that I can put in here, like so, and then I can easily attach uh, the Versa tip right there. And that's it for this wool project and for this video. It really was a lot of fun to create this thing, to start from nothing and end up with such a cool machine that can not only draw, but also burn on wood. I hope you also enjoyed this project. If you have any questions, leave that all in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, check out my Patreon, files to this thing, and of course, industry.cc, where you can read more about my CNC machine. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making and see you in the next one.